It makes me smile because like what's cool is the, I'm not an idiot, <laughs> but technology is one where, you know, you learn a concept and you learn a design and then you start seeing them plug in these same things into new components. I've never tested one of these electric water pumps before. Um, it's not a problem. I just proved to you a concept design troubleshooting 100%. If you have one of these pumps that maybe there's no control signal and you're not sure, is it computer, is it wiring, is it the pump? You can make it turn on, I just showed you how. Don't you wanna, here, come here. This is how today is gone so far. Like, we just left the house. I didn't even do anything yet. I had my truck parked in my neighbor's driveway. Suck at driving. And I hit his sign. I hope the rest of today doesn't go like that. Hi, Ruby! Hi, Ruby, Ruby! I, uh, I want to do the Prius. Okay, that's fine. I don't know. I mean, time wise, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, no, I, I don't care. Um, You're probably going to need a battery charger or for something the, out there for the Prius. Don't do shit. And there's, we, there's a bunch of codes that. His scanner locked Can we up push we, it in? We can. I'd yeah. like to push it in. That way I'm not working out in the cold. Yeah. I just freaking dented my fender backing out of my neighbor's driveway. So I hope today goes better than uh, me leaving my house. What'd you hit their wall? No, there's a freaking sign he's got like no turnaround for and like no. all, <laughs> all the delivery people. It's like stop, you, no and turn. And you turned around in it. Let's go. Let's push. Get the keys. Uh, Our first. Um, lesson today for a hybrid is can we push it in neutral <laughs> we don't know all right so disclaimer is this is absolutely my first no start dealing with on a hybrid and so we want to tread carefully in everything that we're doing um, I am not the expert here at all and I know these things have been around for a really long time this is a 2010 model year but you know Toyota's had hybrids out since like 04 or 03, but I just haven't worked on any of them. And I have no hood prop. This thing's a turd. Am I good up there? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to cut the wheel and not hit anything today, so. Are you gonna help us with this car? Are you gonna help us with this car? All right, 2010 Prius, 1.8 liter hybrid. And we're gonna do a code scan on all of the systems when we started we had five volts on the 12 volt battery and we couldn't uh really do anything get it out of park or anything system two lean mass airflow evap emission control incorrect purge evap control leak detected coolant pump b control malfunction <laughs> what? engine doesn't start fuel run out we have all kinds of codes on this could be you know related to low battery voltage too but it also could be that this has 300,000 miles and the guy just drives all the time with the check engine light on and doesn't care and so our our job is going to be to fix this no start this is not a diagnosis to fix all problems this Danner, this this thing has like all kinds of engine codes too lean exhaust mass airflow purge uh evap Coolant pump. So he he had told me at one point that this happened one other time and someone replaced some kind of fuse. All right. But I don't know. Yeah, no, that's cool. As far as direction and where we're going, I am clearing these faults. We had low voltage. I'm clearing them all. We have a recording of them. I'm not worried about freeze frame data for anything right now. The reason I mentioned that is when you clear faults, you're losing your freeze frame data. I don't care. I'm interested in knowing what comes back. Let's rescan it. HVECU high voltage system interlock circuit high code. So we need to do a little research on these codes. So we're researching this P0AOD code to see if that's interfering with the engine startup. Because right now I cleared codes, I tried to start it, I have no engine codes at all. P0AOD, DTC to component matches, eight battery replacements. Yeah, but I have a jump pack on it, I should be able to start it. So eight people replaced the battery, three people replaced the high voltage battery. 
customer states the check hybrid system light is on cause connected scan tool uh, this is the real fixes i thought this was service information so disconnected dc to dc converter connector found disconnecting the connector the connector was not fully seated resecured connector cleared codes description of the interlock circuit high when the power management control ecu detects that a safety device is operated it will prohibit hybrid system operation or shut off the system main relay there are four safety devices in three different locations the first safety device is located at the service plug grip the second one is located at the frame wire that is connected to the inverter with converter assembly the third one is located at the inverter terminal cover where the motor and generator cables and number two engine wire are connected if service plug grip inverter cover terminal or frame wire is removed the interlock signal line will be open if the vehicle is being driven this condition will determine to be an open circuit or system main relays will not be shut off i feel like research is absolutely positively necessary before we go too far into this there's just not a whole lot on that code these are safety precautions before inspecting the high voltage system or disconnecting low voltage connector of the inverter with converter assembly. Take precautions such as wearing insulated gloves, removing the service plug grip to prevent electrical shocks. After removing the service plug grip, put it in your pocket to prevent other techs from accidentally reconnecting it while you're working on the high voltage system. After disconnecting the service plug, wait 10 minutes before touching any high voltage connectors or terminals. This says the same thing we read before. There's four safety devices in three different locations. What does it do? That's the description. DTC detection condition. Yeah, there's lots of warnings here. Be sure to wear insulated gloves. Hey, the last thing I want to do is teach working on one of these systems like and cheating. You know what I mean? We can't. We can't. There's a bunch of checks. What I'm interested in knowing is what does it do to the engine itself, like the the gas engine part. A bunch of checks. And it doesn't give me, like, what will it do. Like, there's a whole bunch of checks for this code. But I'm interested in, in, in the symptoms behind it. I just feel like none of that would keep the gas engine from starting. I don't know what I'm doing, Danner. No? No. Push it out, you say? I, yeah. Like, the information on this, like, I'm just not prepared at all. Does that thing need charged now? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was down to 10 volts. What are you getting? Like, I know you said you saw... Well, I, I only have that a hybrid, like, some kind of interlock code. No engine codes. I have communication. I have data. There's no reason it shouldn't be cranking. And then the code, like honestly, Danner, for the code. Cut it hard. You're good up front. Go ahead. Um, there's precautions like all through it about wearing gloves and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and, like, when you're messing with 250 volts. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like something I don't want to film. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to produce something that someone's going to get hurt. Hey, listen to this, Danner. I read this before, I guess it just went over my head. This is the description on the code. It says, when the power management control ECU detects a safety device is operated, it will prohibit hybrid system operation or shut off the system main relay. I don't know if that means it's not gonna crank or not gonna start. If it's using the hybrid system to start, then mm -hmm. it's not ever gonna start yeah. the gas engine. We're not gonna go anywhere. There are three safety devices in three different locations. The first safety device is located at the service plug grip. The second one located at the frame wire that's connected to the inverter. I read this to everyone before. The third is located at the inverter cover. By the way, this is the one in the flow chart where when you're touching these things, they're telling you to wear gloves. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do these things mm -hmm. on camera without doing yeah. proper safety yeah. protocol. Yeah. I cannot, you can't, I cannot. You're if the service that. plug grip inverter cover or frame wire is removed, the interlock signal line will be open, which is what we have. If the vehicles being driven, this condition will be determined to be an open and the system main relays will not shut off. If safety devices are reinstalled correctly, the system will return to normal. 
But it doesn't say what it will do if it's not running. But it said if the vehicle is running when this happens, there'll be no effect, but it doesn't tell you that right. it won't start and the key won't turn on or nothing when it's in that mode when it happens. Right, so. I know. It says possible cause wire harness, power management ECU, service plug grip, inverter, converter, assembly. So they, and they show a diagram. This was basically- So there's three of them? It says there are three safety devices. It's weird the way it's worded. It says- No, it says the text that the safety device has been- Is, is oper operated. So it's unplugged. Oh, it says someone touched something and there, unplugged the safety device. There are device. three safety devices. And, yeah, so what does it do though? when it's not running. It tells you what it will do when it's running. And it said it won't do anything. <laughs> It'll return to normal uh, if it's reinstalled. So where are those? That's uh, the only thing we could do is look for those three safety switches. And if it's not in there, then, then it's the inverter assembly or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it so, has 223 volts. Yeah, it sure does. So it's not dead. Right. So I would just see what those fail safe things are. I mean, I know, I, I'm not supposed to touch them without gloves. Well, what's this cover off? They for? tell you to put things in your pocket too. Like, to make sure another tech doesn't plug it back in. Did Shit. you take all this stuff out to get to the battery, I guess? Uh, that would have been Louie. Because there's an orange handle and an orange button over here. <laughs> well, don't touch anything uh, yet, Danner. You should wear high voltage gloves rated at a thousand volts that have been certified within the last six months to perform this procedure. Yeah, we ain't, I can't, we can't touch this, Danner. Okay, let's push it outside. I'll just tell them I don't have the info. We don't have the gloves either, man, you know? I can't, feel, I can't show us touching these things without hybrid Well, can't you get like a scanner Danner like glove with a freaking ground strap? I just, the problem, you know, the, glittery, you yeah. know. The problem is I, I don't know what I'm doing anyway. The procedures that this particular code that we have in here has us going through involves in touching these disconnects. And I'm not gonna do it without the proper equipment. Um, I, it's dangerous, there's cautions, there's warnings, and I'm not gonna bypass that. And so we're walking away from this. and. Our hopes are maybe we get to use some of this and my brother ends up finding something. Yeah, so originally, Danner, we have a whole list of codes. I'll, I'll send those to you as soon as my screen recorder's done processing. Okay. Um, this is- There was like the coolant pump and lean coolant codes. Coolant pump, and we had lean code, we had- um, Like mass um, airflow or something? Hybrid battery uh, replacement code. Like it literally said, replace hybrid battery. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and those didn't come back, you know, when I cleared them, but those were all there. There's you know, massive amounts of codes in this car. To me, it looked like lack of maintenance. He's been driving around with a check engine light for a really long time. Like that procedure, Danner, was talking about some disconnects. There's three of them. I mean, is this one of one, them right here? I, I don't know. No, because it said when you unplug it to put the piece in your pocket so another technician in the shop that you're working in doesn't come over and plug it in. They literally mm. said in the procedure mm. to put it in your pocket. You're not putting that in your pocket. Is it that little orange thing in the back? Well, there's three of them. That's probably one uh, of there's them. There's three there's of them? There's three. Because there was a little orange like circle thing next to the bulk plug at the battery yeah, pack. That might be a disconnect kind of I don't, fuse I thing. don't know, brother. I don't know. Yo, what's up? I started the car. I'm, I'm not gonna say no. You just gotta come back with your microphone. Are you, I don't know. I, we we I, just gotta try something here real quick. Are you kidding me? What did I miss? Bend over, man. Bend <laughs> over. That's your hybrid glove. Yeah. <laughs> it's orange. <laughs> oh my goodness. Was it the plug in the back? Yeah. No. Just get in and press the start button it's, with your foot on the brake. So the engine. I don't know. Just just. Just, I, I don't know if we're, it's probably a fluke. It's never gonna happen again. So foot on the brake and then start, right? Turn the key on. Now hold the gas pedal to the floor. Ready? See this right here? This, this switch, this was sitting like that. Shine that light back now on Now try that. it. Try it again. It never- Turn it around. It, or, or. it never says ready, it says check hybrid system. It said that even after I was done, but it, it won't do it now, right? No. All right, now hold on a second too. Up here, Caleb. One of the problems that I was having, Danner, too, is it's telling me to like, 
look for the ready sign. Like, I don't know the what that is. Ready is the is. green light on the button. It's not. There is a ready that come up below, oh, okay. Okay, that's below possible. the exclamation yeah, it point. Does. That's probably right. So, All right, so I'm hitting the gas pedal. Look at the sign up there. Below the exclamation point, nothing, All right? No, there is no ready sign, right? I'm gonna turn the key off. Okay, plug up, connector. Danner? I looked over here and I'm looking at this thing and it's got arrows and I'm spinning it. Nothing's happening. And I figured hey, maybe I'll look that up before I screw with that. And then I went like this. I'm like, oh. So now, now watch. We have a ready message on the dash now that we didn't have before. And then I didn't know that to start one of these, it actually, I didn't do anything. It just started yeah, on its because they will. Man, does that engine sound wonky? There's something wrong with that inverter. That was the inverter? That probably was the stuff that sandwiched between the tranny and the engine, yeah. the, like the torque inverter-ish thing with the... Yeah. I mean, it may be. So or it did feel like it was misfiring, though. It could have just been rattling, too. So there's a problem now, though, is like, okay, it runs, but why was that disconnected back there? So that's cool. It starts, <laughs> but are we going to go any further? No, I, uh, I, I still think the answer is no. I can't show you what I'm doing because it's still processing, but I can do a code scan. We'll do a pre again. Yeah, engine coolant pump code came back. High voltage system interlock circuit high. Well, that's probably what I had plugged back in. It was. So disclaimer, don't touch those switches unless you're wearing gloves. I, I, I'm not seeing a safety issue there for that part, but you know, following protocol, I'm not gonna teach you guys to do something that's unsafe. Holy <laughs> So, that wasn't intentional. <laughs> that was an accident. All right, so we, we rescanned. Um, we have those, you know, there's an engine coolant pump malfunction, but we have the um, P0A0D. I smell antifreeze. This thing's probably got a bad head gasket. You think? It's probably why it misfired on startup because the cylinder filled up it and that's what misfire. happens to these. And it, it'll misfire every time, if you come to a red light and yeah. it's, you stop and the engine shuts off for yeah. a couple minutes, and then it starts back up uh, and then it burns out all the coolant and then it's fine again. So it's probably a basket case anyway. Yeah, well, we know that. Wait, you, wait do you see this code list? But let, I'm gonna clear these uh, real quick and then we'll rescan, see if that um, P0A0D code is gone. Okay. And now let's rescan. Yeah, that code's gone. The HV ECU code that we were trying to chase with those three disconnects is gone. Um, I do have a check engine light on with no engine codes, which is strange. So I'm not sure why I'd have a check engine light on with no engine codes. It could be because my scan tool's connected. I've seen that on some cars where a scan tool can interfere. So we have that 1582 map disc reading malfunction. I don't care about that. Is that done now? Yes, it is. So why do I have a check engine light on? Let me go to the engine system. Oh, that's weird that the full scan didn't show it, but engine coolant pump B control malfunction. So yeah, we need some history here now on that. Um, that's a, a different process altogether. And um, we're kind of out of time here today. I'm not attacking this coolant pump B code. My brother needs to talk to this customer too. What else did I want to look at while we were here? Those other, those three disconnects, it would be helpful to know that. Where those are at. Yeah, just so we can, we can fill others in on what we needed to know ourselves. Where are these disconnects? There's one back there that you guys saw. Holy sh there's, that's a major precaution right here. It says, after removing the service plug grip, do not operate the power switch as it may damage the hybrid vehicle control ECU. Hi. Hi, Ruby. I don't even care. You can get me dirty. I don't care. I just need some, some puppy love. This is my girl. See, I feel better already. I feel better already. All right. I just want to find these locations. This is the diagram. Service plug grip. What the hell is that? Is that in the back? frame wire, an inverter terminal cover. Hey, identifying service plug grip. That's the one in the back. Oh, he's talking to this customer right now. All right, so now we know what the service plug grip is now. 
That's that one back there. That's the one that was unplugged. That's the only component they give me. Yeah, so just so we're, everybody's clear here, the warning before inspecting the high voltage system, it says take safety precautions such as wearing gloves and removing the service plug grip to prevent electrical shocks. That's the piece in the back. After removing service plug, plug grip, put it in your pocket. That's the one we were reading about. And then you wanna wait 10 minutes to require discharge the high voltage capacitor. That's before we do any, any high, uh, the hybrid work yeah i mean in step step four it's like check the service plug grip and it's saying warning be sure to wear insulated gloves and i, I just didn't want to proceed any further so there's a there's a disconnect switch right here that yeah. orange switch did anyone yeah. touch that because it was pulled the wrong way as soon as i pushed it together and locked it everything started because oh, really? that's a main disconnect. It's like a fail safe. When you want to start working on this hybrid system, you got to disconnect stuff. You want to disconnect the battery so you don't get shocked and killed when you're working okay. with all the voltage. And that right here, mm -hmm. can you shut that off, Paul? Can I show him? Um, yeah. Um, I don't have to right now. I, I just. Yeah, no, that's fine. So I don't, it wasn't fully out. But well, this here this one, okay. was pulled about halfway. Oh. It was about here and it didn't, nothing was working. We didn't know what to do. I was going to yeah, call you and start asking about. you questions. And I went like this and now it works. I hesitate to say, hey, I fixed it, take your car. But I know that was our problem um, today. Well, listen, Dan, or the other thing too, that this is setting a constant, immediate uh, coolant pump code. So there's a there's an issue on that front as well. On the, does this thing ever Hang overheat on. on you? Has it been running hot or anything, overheat? Okay, but we have a water pump code. Yeah, here, I'll show you. Because the water pump's electric and it has a speed sensor in it so it knows how fast it's wanna moving show, for Wanna show them that code? So we have, um, we have this, here. this code here, the coolant pump B circuit and the engine water pump is an electric motor because everything's hybrid. So it spins and then it has a speed sensor in it and it knows how fast it's running and we have a code for the water pump. How long ago was the radiator put in it? Three, three weeks ago. And it's yeah, about yeah, the same yeah. time when all the problems yeah, started? Yep. Yeah. Was it overheating before your hybrid system stuff no. started? No, or after. Uh, yeah, before, yeah. This is before. I mean, do, should, should we look at that? You want me to look at that? I mean, we yeah, should. Because it's, it, it it. It's, it's an electric motor, I believe, and it has an RPM sensor yeah, in it. Yeah, let's look at it. While I'm, while it's, I'm here. It's coolant pump B. Coolant pump B is there Which like, I believe is the, is there there's more, an electric coolant pump well, for the hybrid wait, system, before two, we, separate, two separate cooling systems. Okay, well once you're done talking with him, yeah. on, before we attack this, there's two other components I want you to help me identify for our viewers. Sure. That, that's the service grip plug they're calling. I took some pictures and I, I want help finding these two other components so we can all learn a little hybrid yeah, stuff. Yeah, for sure. And then we'll do the, Caleb and I will do the coolant pump B circuit now. Okay. All right, cool. But look, look at this code list here. You scroll through that and you use them and then just talk with him about, I'm really worried about, where's my engine codes? Our, our initial ones. Yeah, look, airflow. So system too lean, mass airflow, EVAP purge, EVAP leak, uh, replace hybrid battery pack. Although that could be from the Connection, plug. the make and break connection yeah. for sure. Um, have you been driving this with the check engine light on? Has that check yes. engine? Yeah. yeah. So you're going to have, you're going to have other systems that aren't immediately need to be addressed, but we have multiple problems on the, on the car. And, and you see, you see these codes right here, Dumb. but here's the thing. We don't want to chase any of those right now. We want to attack the overheat. The overheat's yeah. the concern. These That's ones yeah. are not. Yeah, I know as long as you're, plus. Yeah. Long as long as you're stuff. okay with that check engine light still being on when we're done, mm -hmm. the car is at least going to be drivable and not going to overheat once we, but we have to look at this coolant pump code. That's, okay. that's priority because that code right now is current. That's the one that we have to worry about right now. And that will make it overheat and then yeah. we'll ruin the engine. We don't want to do that. So that's the one we need to attack. Yeah, so I think coolant pump B, believe it or not, is the engine one, not okay. the hybrid one. There's two separate cooling systems okay. on this car. They're totally or separate. Okay. 
you got an electric coolant pump down under here under the radiator. Stuff. So we're pumping coolant through the high high voltage uh, battery. Through, no, through the um, inverter stuff. Okay, it's gotcha. cooling that down. Okay, you know, so you have a cooling system that's just for that, and then you have the other cooling system for the engine itself. It's and electric too. And I believe pump B circuit or and, and coolant it, pump B is this one. And you said that has that has an RPM. It, there's an sensor RPM too? sensor oh, in sweet. it. Sweet. All right. So we can handle that. <laughs> Where were you at, Caleb? Oh man, he he just jumped like a freaking Halloween freaking. <laughs> I was just listening. I was we, doing. He was turning the water pump on, on and off, and then he pressed it. I'm like, I hear it running, and then he turned it off, and then he turned it back on, and the car started. And he was like, I jumped. Ah! Yeah. So yeah, you were gonna say something. Was I? Oh, I was trying to get. I mean, you know, some there's a language barrier a sure. little bit, so I was trying to understand. Did your shutoff concern happen after the radiator was right. done? Right. And he said uh, yes, and then he said no, and then he said, but it was the same day. So we don't so know. I don't know for sure. It's possible it overheated. First. It's possible this coolant pump thing yeah. was an issue, and then it overheated, and maybe it never needed it. And maybe radiator. whoever put the radiator maybe. in. Well, it probably blew the radiator apart. Oh, you know, it probably be. overheated and it was leaking. It might, or someone just said, I don't know, put a radiator. I don't, we have you know. to worry about head gasket here, we too. We do. We should but, do an HC sniff test before we go any further. I mean, no, Caleb and I will troubleshoot the water yeah. pump circuit, but I'm saying before you change yeah. that water pump, sell yeah, the job. they're not cheap. Let's do, a, let's do an HC sniff test. Yeah. Um, will you um, maybe help me find those two other components? What's the inverter terminal cover? Well, there's cover? the inverter, is this part here. So the terminal cover, it could just be a lock. So they're, they're just showing that as like, and of course you want to be careful what you're touching. This is the inverter here. Uh, it's got the, the big ass yeah, freaking case. This is probably the inverter. So, so, so. The, the cover itself would have a switch maybe? Is that like integral part of like, the, oh, they did show me a picture of that. They showed me a picture of this. So this cover right here, if you have that cover unbolted, it would open a switch, okay. a safety mechanism to sense. keep things. So that would be number two. Okay. Then where's the, what's the frame wire? Well, you probably got to rack it. It's racked. No, it's not racked. There's, they did show me a picture well, of there's that. There's probably a, there's probably this, you know, this, the heavy orange wire runs all along the frame before it pokes back into so the car. Underneath. So there could be, there could be another connector somewhere. You know what I mean? Yes. Where it might bolt somewhere. Okay. I don't know if well, I it's not important. I'm not. Care about I'm not. That right I don't now. either. You just, that's where you put help and let someone comment. Well, and tell that's you right. That's at, right? Uh, read help. the comments below, <laughs> and one of the guys will even share a picture with us too. So, um, okay. So um, back to this and the overheating and all of that. Caleb, take a listen. I'm in a bi-directional control for the water pump. Stay here for one second, Dana. Wait for him to jump. Yeah. Right listen. Now. I hear it. I hear it too. Is that this car that's I, yeah, humming? Yeah, it's probably the throttle body. I can hear the coolant pump though, for sure. Well, we at least hear you, something You said there's an, R, there's an RPM for these coolant there's pumps? An R, the, yeah, that sets some of these codes when the RPM is not what it thinks it should be. Electric water pump RPM. Hell yeah. And I'll turn it on. <laughs> so. I, I hear it turning on, but we have no RPM. So does that mean it's like broken? Like what? There's a possibility that the impeller, you know what I mean? All maybe. right, so we need to do a little more research on this water pump to yeah. see how it's done. Okay. All right. Got it. Damn it. I was hoping it would have started. I wouldn't <laughs> jump this time. So I want a little bit more info of this, this water pump. P261B. It says ECM controls the engine water pump assembly by calculating the necessary amount of coolant flow based on engine coolant temperature. I'm wondering if this doesn't have a thermostat. It might not. Well, it still would need a thermostat. Maybe. So amount of coolant flow based on engine coolant temperature, engine speed, and vehicle speed info. The speed of the engine water pump assembly is controlled steplessly using a duty cycle control, duty cycle signal sent from the ECM. This optimal control enhances warm-up performance and reduces cooling losses. 
thus reducing the specific fuel consumption of the engine. Oh, that's so cool, the technology is cool. All right, so the ECM calculates engine speed of the engine water pump assembly using a duty cycle signal sent from the engine water pump assembly. Oh, sent from. When the speed of the engine water pump assembly becomes less than 900 while it's operating, the ECM detects the malfunction and stores the code. Engine water pump assembly operates steplessly based on a duty cycle signal sent from the ECM. If actual duty cycle ratio does not cor correspond to the target drive duty cycle of the engine water pump, the ECM detects the malfunction. Okay, cool. So computer uh, duty cycle controls it and then it sends a duty cycle signal back for its RPM. So open or sort the engine water pump assembly, uh, engine water pump assembly or the ECM. And the fact that I have bi-directional controls and I hear it turn on really covers a whole bunch already of what we need to do. Hey, do these things have thermostats? As I'm reading this, I'm like, maybe it doesn't even use a thermostat. I guess it would still have to, because if you're on the highway, or, or what kind of heaters do they use? Is this coolant? Is it a coolant heater box? If it's not a coolant controlled heater box, then then you wouldn't really. Because <laughs> like going down the highway, the reason you'd want a thermostat is to keep the heat in the engine. You could keep the heat in the engine if you're not circulating the water pump. So do we not use? I'm just wondering, like technology wise, like is there, there maybe could be a heat pump? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's like a hermetically sealed AC compressor. Maybe it. We're not gonna to wanna to use any of that audio. No, hermetically. <laughs> no, no, you're eating, <laughs> you're eating. Um, so uh, this says it uses a duty cycle controlled signal to it by the ECM. We know that's working because I can hear the pump turn on, but then it sends, the pump sends a duty cycle signal back based on RPM. So uh, I'm gonna pull the diagram now and we're gonna see what kind of setup we got here. Oh, and I don't, know, I don't know how you would tell if it's actually pumping coolant or not, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Water pump assembly. So it's four wires, battery positive and a ground. I know it runs, so I'm not worried about those. It's really the blue and green circuits that we're looking at. Okay, let's find this pump and do our checks. Because one says WPO and one says WPI, so it'd be water pump output, water pump input. See, we can work on hybrids. Yo, where's this water pump at, Danner? Everybody needs Danner all at the same time. Hey, come over here. Who's calling me? Me, where's the water pump? Where's the water pump at? I wanna say it's on below the passenger headlight. You guys are gonna have to forgive Mr. Eating um, over there. It's right here. Right next to that thermostat looking housing. So in that's it. Okay, so I need Take to... these 10s out. Okay. Ah, sweet. This guy right here is our electric water pump. Got four wires right here on the back of it. We're gonna back probe that thing. You hear the pump run? It's like coming and turning on and off on its own. All right, so the heavy gauge blue wire is gonna be your battery positive because that's um, gonna be your, heavy, your high current flow. Your heavy gauge brown is your high current flow. And then your blue is your control signal. Your green is your monitored signal. So let me grab a couple of test leads and an amp clamp. We'll do some measurements. Use the snap on scopes. So you piggyback your grounds like this. So three different channels, all sharing the same COM port. Okay, that's my setup. Channel one, channel two, voltage. Channel three, amperage. As far as current flow goes, I can go on either of the two heavy cables, either one, either the feed or the ground. Okay, we'll do that for the ground. And then we're gonna back probe the two smaller ones. Oh, that is a big signal right there. Scared me. That's a lot of current, man. There was a lot there. So I'm gonna switch this to a 40 amp. And then I'm gonna switch my amp clamp to a 40 amp. And we can see that guy. And then voltage. Okay, K2 
connections are uh, hard to see the other wires, but I pointed them out to you before. The uh, small gauge blue is my yellow trace. The small gauge green is my green trace. And my amp clamp is on the ground of the pump motor. So we'll be able to watch all three. You have no change on the green trace at all. It's just fixed, fixed at 14 volts. There's your pulse width modulated signal. Amperage, I don't need to be on a 40. I'm switching back to 20. Switch back to a 20. Channel three is 20. It's cycling on and off. Yeah, so we have like four amps, you know, with peaks upwards of 10, peaks and valleys of amperage, and no change on the green trace, fixed at battery voltage of 14. So I don't even have to hit the bi-directional controls, it's doing it on itself, on its own. I want Danner to see this. But that's enough to show you the signal coming out is not there. And then we'll figure if it's pull up or pull down here in a second, because that'll be a factor too. Input is the green, output's the blue. So the blue is the command, and the green is the watched signal. Yeah, in our case, the yellow trace is my command. The computer sent in the command to the pump. We hear the pump turn on, but we have no input back. And that's why we have a code. So we're, we're done, it needs a pump. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, that's straightforward troubleshooting right there. And if I unplug that, that'll tell me whether or not this is pull up or pull down circuit um, coming from that pump. The fact that I have 14 volts there and it's flatline tells me that I'm not worried about a wiring problem because if it was pull up and the pump produced it itself, if we had an open, we would still have a signal at the pump. And then you would say to yourself, well, wait, I have a signal at the pump. Why is the computer not reading any RPM? Because remember on the scan tool, we have no RPM signal. And then that's when you would look for an open. And then you go to the computer wire and check it there. This is basic standard stuff. Um, if it was a pull down design, which we'll find out, uh, where the computer sends battery voltage to it and the water pump pulls it down to make the square wave for the RPM signal. Uh, again, our wiring is fine and we have no signal there. Uh, the pump is bad. So in either circumstance, the pump is bad right now. Whether or not we know circuit design, that is a faulty pump. And while we're waiting on him, I'm going to unplug this. I'll wait till it shuts off. And we'll watch the green trace and this will tell me circuit design right now on whether or not it's pull up or pull down. In fact, we can look at both the green and the yellow traces unplugged, unplugged. I'm maintaining battery voltage on the green wire. That is a pull down circuit design. Um, the yellow trace would be a pull up. So the computer's command to this is a pull up design. The computer's watched signal coming out is pull down. You wanna see something cool? I can trigger both of those with my test light and prove that concept. I'll be right back. Uh, we'll do the pull down one first, the signal. I need a ground. And then if we look at the green trace, the top wire, test light on off to that, Um, it probably will not. It just should pull it down. Yeah, I'm just pulling it down. Let me go longer time base so you guys can see what I'm doing. Watch the green tray, see how I can make the signal. Now nothing's happening, so if we go to the scan tool, it, it shouldn't have lit. Did it light? Oh, no. No. It's yeah, it's just a signal. It's a pull down circuit. So if I go to the scanner, so there's some type of Hall effect in there for the RPM gauge. Electric water pump right there. That signal, I should be able to make an RPM by, by doing this, but it, the command might need to be there. Nice. <laughs> You'll like this in the edits, Caleb. I'm making a coolant RPM signal on the scan tool. You guys that are not following that, this is chapter two material. There's so much that I have on pull up and pull down circuitry. In the first part of this video, I'm like talking about the hybrid and the difficulties I'm having for lack of knowledge on my part. But once you get your foundation, which I need still on these, 
the rest of the testing like this, the low voltage circuits, I should add. Um, this is no different. This is my first electric water pump. And I'm telling you by looking at that circuit, signal circuit design, unplugged, it's a pull down design. Water pump pulls the signal to ground to make the RPM signal. What did I do with my test light? I just took the test light on and off and did what the water pump should be doing that it's not doing. The fact that that water pump's functional though, helps us in that, the overheating part maybe. Now, I don't know what the current flow should be. I know it's being turned on, but um, that's just a side note on that front as far as is that pump actually pumping some coolant or not? Mechanically, um, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Something broken in there and we hear the motor part running, but maybe the impeller is not and it's not triggering the hull effect for the RPM. I'm not sure exactly the internal parts of that, but what we can say for sure is wiring, computer, everything is fine. This needs a water pump. All right, that's the signal side. Now the command side of the pump, it's interesting that it keeps cycling it. Oh, I guess that makes sense that it would because it's also cooling. Is that pump also cooling other things other than the engine? Again, a foundational piece I don't know. But I hear the computer energizing it. And what I need is a 12 volt source because I want to connect my test light to battery voltage now. I just need a 12 volt feed to be in the form of my paper clip. The Dan are working on a hybrid, poking it with a paper clip. <laughs> Let's see with the engine running what this is doing. Yeah, it's running that pump all the time with the engine running. No signal. Okay test light to battery positive. When I touch a ground, my test light lights, right? I know that that signal gets triggered in a pull up design. Before I do this test, let's watch the control one more time. Watch the yellow trace. And I told you if this is a pull up design. The signal to this is pull up. With it unplugged, we had no voltage as opposed to the other one unplugged, we had high voltage, which was pulled down, right? So I know when I make this signal, I'm gonna take my test light on and off to battery positive on the yellow wire, yellow trace, which is my small gauge blue wire. I should be able to make that pump turn on. Just wait till the computer's done with its part. Test light's connected to battery positive, so when I touch ground, it lights. I'm gonna to touch on and off the pin. Did you hear it turn on? I heard it, I didn't The frequency it. was off, but watch. <laughs> it makes me smile because like, what's cool is- You're not the, an idiot. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> but technology is one where, you know, you learn a concept and you learn a design and then you start seeing them plug in these same things into new components. I've never tested one of these electric water pumps before. Um, it's not a problem. I just proved to you a concept, design, troubleshooting, 100%. If you have one of these pumps that maybe there's no control signal and you're not sure, is it computer, is it wiring, is it the pump? You can make it turn on. I just showed you how. It's a pull up design. Test light to 12 volts, on off the signal, makes that pump turn on. There's a little module inside that pump. It's not just a simple pump. There's a module in there. There's a hull effect trigger that's for the, for the input coming back out. And that is a pulled down design on that. And I showed you, you can do a hull effect bypass test and trigger that, pull it to ground, make the signal, make the computer see the RPM. This needs a pump. The only thing we, we the only thing, <laughs> the only thing that we won't know, and I'm hoping we get a chance to come back. I'm unfortunately leaving for uh, a week uh, or so here and the repair on this might get done while I'm gone. And I might not have a chance to show you guys the after water pump signals. And I just hope that my brother, I can have him do it. He can get me ones on the ver on his little Vantage and then we can compare the amperage. Cause I'm, I'm curious to see what the amperage pattern looks like. Um, let me set this up on a, we'll do a one second time base. Um, and then we'll hopefully get a one second time base from my brother. Uh, primarily what I'm interested in is the after water pump amperage for you guys. And uh, I, I apologize if I don't have an opportunity to get it for you.
Dude, you're gonna like this, man. It's pretty awesome. I just figured I'd light a cigar and sit down and- Yeah, man. I don't have a stool. Whatever. Look how dirty these are. Just look at Paul through them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so real quick, um, just so you're on the same page with me for the wiring diagram, right? It's a four wire pump, very basic circuit. Main power feed from the fuse box is the blue wire. That's the heavy gauge blue wire. Okay. Main ground, brown wire going right to the block. Okay. okay. And then you have a two small gauge wires, a green and a blue. And on the diagram- Is that like polarity type thing? No, these are uh, the control and the signal. So water pump input, is your RPM input. Mm -hmm. Water pump output is your command to it. Okay. Yep. All right, so those are our four signals. I'm monitoring the command pump. Side. I'm monitoring all three. Okay. The green trace is the input, no input signal. That's why we have a code. Mm -hmm. Yellow trace is the command for it. Mm -hmm. green, uh, blue trace is my amperage. And amperage you can read on the heavy gauge brown or the blue, either one. Current comes in, current comes out. I can go either side. Gotcha. So you can see the commands there. It stopped. And it, it did, and it's a design where it's sending voltage to turn it on. Mm -hmm. So test light connected to battery positive. If I touch on and off the yellow trace myself, watch, I can make the pump turn on. Yeah. Not the same pulse width, but I can make the pump turn on. And then the opposite, the signal itself is a pull down. See, we're fixed at 14. Watch this. That one, I mean, you're not gonna see anything here. It's just a signal. So if I test, test light on off the ground, test light's not gonna light here, but on off, I can make the, see, see I'm pulling it down. Mm -hmm. So watch the scan data. Oh, and you can RPM. make an RPM, yeah. So then I got my RPM, bam, bam, bam. I see it. Done, so, needs a pump. So here's what I need for so, me, because I'm not gonna be- pump actually running? It is, but here's what we don't know. Um, like, is it pumping? For well, anything? the motor's running, the motor's spinning. Yeah. I, I can hear it. Yeah. And I have amperage. Yeah. But is the impeller broken? Yeah. And that's what triggers the RPM signal. Oh, it's on the impeller side. I don't know. Okay. I don't have an RPM signal, so it can't be, for what I'm hearing, the motor's spinning. So the, I believe it's a hull effect trigger, just like a crank sensor, and it so. needs the impeller side to, to get me the signal, and not, that's not spinning. Okay. That's my guess. It could be that, it's just a faulty hull effect and it actually is working and yeah, pumping and yeah. there, there's no issue. That could but he be, had an overheat, which did have an that overheat. variable. But he also had an overheat that he had a radiator that was wrong and maybe that caused the hull effect to get damaged in the pump, you know? And I don't know, it needs a pump. Mm -hmm. So we're done. Special thanks to my brother for just being the man as usual. He's gonna take care of the water pump for us and hopefully get us those after pictures that I asked him for. Um, the other thing that he's going to do before he does the job is he, he's going to check this for a head gasket just to make sure that we don't have any issues because there were overheating concerns. And uh, I hope you learned a little bit about a hybrid system as far as the starting goes. I know I did today and, um, you know, I feel a little embarrassed on some of that. But Caleb can work his magic and not make me look completely stupid in the end. We appreciate you guys. We know that you know that we're learning on the job just like you guys are. And if anything, it's a, it's a one up for you guys when you spend some time with us and watch our struggles, so then you won't have the same. So again, we appreciate you guys and we'll see you next time.